Hello and welcome to episode two of this Let's Play Crastorio SpaceX series. Uh, in the first episode, we built a whole lot of factory. We built a starter factory, we built iron and steel, we built the, a, a good starting point for oil. There's further work that needs on it, but we're not gonna we're not gonna get there just yet. And then this block in front of you, which is stone, glass, silicon, quartz. Yeah. And I need to get on with the next thing. Now, in the end of that first episode, my plan was to move the camera over to rare metals. Let me just give you a, my kind of my, my thought process. So, we started up here with the time lapse, and we've slowly worked our way down. And what I was going to do was just move the camera across, deal with rare metals, and then move the camera up, deal with gases and chemicals, and then up for copper. And you know that kind of made sense. You know, we started here, worked our way down, come across, and then up. Makes sense. The problem is that I want to do on the right hand side what I've done on the left hand side, which is that I want to build a block and then I want to, I want that block to determine the size of all the other blocks. Um, you know, so I've, I, what I did here was I built the iron and then I built a vertical path and then I was trying to squeeze everything that I need in that space that's left behind. And I want to do the same on the right hand side. And the thing, the block that I want to determine the size of it is the copper block. So, you know, this original plan by moving over here to rare metals, I think it would have, required, would have required me to build the copper block that I wanted to use so that I knew how big it was going to be. And then I could build rare metals to fit that size. But that's just backwards. That doesn't make any sense to me. So what, instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the camera up here to copper. I'm just going to go up here instead. Now, it doesn't. it's a little bit for uh, circuitous. So anyway. You know, we started up here, worked our way down, and we're going to come up here, and then we're going to work our way down. And then I'm going to have to probably come up back up here again. Uh, no, a problem for another day. I'll figure something out. Anyway, that's the plan. We're going to move the bu move the uh, camera up here for copper. But I need to figure out what's going in the bus. Um, and I've, I have made a list. I've made a list of all of the things that I think are going in it. I just don't know. What, what, let's, uh, let me pull it out. Let's see what we've got. Okay. Direct count of things. I've got 68 conveyor belts or pipes. I've, I've allowed myself 37 gaps, you know, between those things, which gives a total of 68 plus 37. 105. I'm going to give myself a little bit more than that because I want some allowances. So I don't know. 150 maybe? 160? Meh. Let's, I'll pick a number out of the sky, and then we'll move the camera. It will figure itself out. Let's do it. Yeah. That's copper down. Nice. We are ticking things off the list with good regular regularity. I like it. It's good. Um, and it, once again, it's really only half of this block because, you know, I'm going to build train stations in here and then the same again over here. Um, you know, if you if you watched episode one and you heard me talk about building this block that was going to be too big, was going to limit my options from up here. Yeah, just, just forget I ever said that. This, this is going to stick out. It's going to be big and obtrusive. Anyway, by the by, I had a little, my, my working out where the bus was going to go. I had my number. What was it? 150, 160, something like that. I measured it out and that 150, 160 came to about here. So I was like, well, if I just left, just moved it out a little bit more, I can encompass this 
nice patch of juicy oil. So that's what I did. So yeah, slightly bigger bus than I was anticipating. I think it's worked out about 200. It's going to be a lot more space than I need. That's not a terrible place to be in. But it just means that the base, the, 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 the giganticism of the base is starting to become clear. It's going to be big. It's going to be different. And, and this T-junction is going to be tricky. But well, anyway, th this isn't for another day. Um, next, working through the list, would be gas and chemicals. So, build some paths, move the camera, and then let's get on with that. And we have gases and chemicals, or at least the, just the start portion of it. You know, the, the bit of it that fits in this same size block as the copper bit that's above it. Still, same thinking as before, you know, we're going to have some train stations here that deal with copper. Potential factory over on this side, and the same is going to be true, just like on the other side of the map. We're going to have maybe some train stations in here to deliver all mineral water in, and then some more factory on the other side. So it's just really a case of getting something down getting a, a basic blueprint, getting some bare essentials sorted. Um, and there's no bus. And I mentioned this in the aborted series, and it's very for one very, very simple reasons, because I don't really know what any of these inputs and outputs are at this point. I mean, if we ignore the salt separation on the left, I'll get to these blocks in a second. This block here is dealing with water separation. So these two, these two lanes of pipes here, these are the ones delivering the water. And then these two lanes, this one here, and this one here, these two lanes. One of them is oxygen, and one of them is hydrogen, but I don't know which was which yet. They're all connected up correctly, like all the, the outputs are connecting up correctly, as far as I know. They're just, I just don't know which is which. So the bus, that will have to come later. Um, I'm not too worried about that. It's really just a case of putting something down on the map at this point in time. Now, when we're dealing with... What I always worry about when we're dealing with processes like this, where we're outputting two gases or liquids at the same time, what I worry about is it, what happens if we want, if we need one of those gases or liquids, but we've got too much of the other one. Because in this situation where we've got oxygen and hydrogen, if we need oxygen, but the system is completely saturated with hydrogen, then the, the system won't produce any more oxygen. So I want to build in a system which vents that hydrogen so that we can create more oxygen and there might be a scenario where the opposite is true where we have too much oxygen in the system but and we need hydrogen we don't have any of that so i want a system to deal with that scenario as well and if we have a scenario where both of those are full where we have completely full of hydrogen and completely full of oxygen then i want no venting i don't want any venting because that's just a waste of energy complete pointless so I, at some point in time, I'm going to come up with a circuit network. It's the same circuit network that I've done on all of these other bases. It's a really, really simple thing. And that's what these flares are going to do. So one of these banks of flares is going to deal with oxygen, whichever that one this is, because I don't know yet. And that's why I really don't want to set up any of the circuit networks, because I don't know which is which. And this one will vent off the other one, if that's hydrogen or oxygen, whichever it is. And then these two pumps in the middle, these will control um, whether the liquid is being introduced to those vents and the system is going to be controlled by these two tanks so the end of the syst of this bank of production the end of this that kind of system as a whole is these kind of four um, valves which only let liquid out these two tanks are essentially going to measure how much of oxygen and hydrogen whichever one it happens to be is in the rest of the system and then that's what the circuit network will use to determine whether it needs to vent off hydrogen or oxygen or neither so i've kind of i've set this up for um the water separation and i've got a similar sort of system set up for the sand separation as well um so i've got the kind of vent the, the, the flares in the middle two pumps 
flares in the middle, two pumps. So the, 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 it's kind of a slightly different orientation, but it's going to do the same basic process. Um, so that's how I kind of deal with this, these systems where we're outputting two uh, gases or liquids and we aren't sure which one we need at any one moment in time. Um, and to just go through the rest of the block, so this is sand separation and sand separation. So, you know, I, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm, I'm using every piece of sand that I'm producing in this factory to potentially create hydrogen and chlorine. Although I'm, that's, I'm probably going to be routing sand to several other places. So this is a maximum worst case. You know, it's still that redundancy. It is entirely possible that half of this part of the factory, this sand separation, because I've got two more blocks of it down here, that I'll, I'll only be using half of this. But I know that chlorine was important in Crastorio, and I wanted to deal with sand first, because that removes it from the bus, and it means that I don't have to have sand that travels all the way down. Because um, this is the only place that needs sand, so I want to get those conveyor belts done and dusted as early as possible in this kind of bus that I've got available to me. Then we've got the water separation that I just went through. Um, hydrogen chloride and then um, nitrogen, ammonia and nitric acid all kind of in one block. Um, the maths of this block is a little bit fudged. I've, you know, I've been trying to, I tried to squeeze it in the space that I've got available and you know, other than, to be honest, it's worked out better than I could have thought it would work out. I've got this nice straight line the ammonia nitric acid block that kind of sticks out a little bit two tiles but that's not the end of the world um you know really what i was aiming for was this 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 conveyor belt kind of indicates the bus that exists in the oil setup so i was aiming to have this completely free and that's what i've got you know if we look at the map then anything that needs to come out of here is going to travel right down here right down here right through now I've got this nice big gap that I can rearrange stuff as and how I want, really, to be honest. I mean, that was really what I was aiming for, to give myself that space. So, I mean, looking at the map, this is exactly what I was talking about earlier. Was it earlier or in the last episode where I was like, I need this space because these are bigger blocks, bigger units. I need this extra space. And, I mean, it just, it's worked out excellently. It's worked out really, really well. It's fit in the space, just perfectly so that's the gases and chemicals or the start of it there's probably going to be more but we can deal with that later let's get the rare metals down um, because that's the, the last big chunk that i really want to care about at this moment in time uh, computer chips are going to come soon but for this per for this moment rare metals <laughs> So after a bit of squeezing and maneuvering stuff around, I've been able to squeeze, I've been able to get the four blocks of rare metals in here that I wanted in more or less the right kind of space. Um, so here's the thing, you know, a good a good engineer, in my opinion, it does it doesn't they don't design by the seat of their pants. They always have a certain amount of something in their back pocket back pocket. You know, we I would term it as bunts. You know, a little bit of slack in the system maybe. Um, and in terms of Factorio, that can represent itself in a few ways. So one of the ways that that, can re that that bunch you can generate in the factory is just by simply putting more units down than you need. You know, if a formula says you need 100 and you put down 110, then you've got 10% bunts in that system. You know, just as a simple analogy. And I, I like to keep a certain amount of bunts f in terms of space. So uh, the space that I've, that I've saved, that's the way I term it, it's probably quite tedious and boring to, to go through, but I can show you something quite simple here that will give you kind of an, an, an analogy of the kind of thing I'm talking about. So when you, when I look at these furnaces, if I was ever squeezed for space, there's there's a few tiles in here that I could lose. For example, I could, I could have all of the inputs and outputs in the middle. And that would save me... How much space would that save me? That would save me all of this space. That's five tiles. 
And that's another five tiles here that I could save. And another five tiles on the other set of furnaces that I could save. And another that's 20 tiles that I could save. I could essentially build this block 20 tiles narrower if I laid these furnaces out in this manner instead of the manner that I've laid it down. But that just means that I've got, if, if, if further down the line, I, 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 don't, I can't foresee any problems at the moment. But, you know, I've got, I had that in there if I needed to play around with the space uh, to squeeze things in. And, and the saving that I found, I found eight tiles. That's what I needed to save. I needed to save eight tiles, which was four tiles per block. And I found a quite simple way of doing that. But it's quite boring. I'm not, not going to go through that. Anyway, that's raw metals. Uh, I'm pretty happy with it. I mean, the only, the only, the only bad thing is that I didn't quite meet the target that I set myself with regards to stone. So, you know, it's a little bit wider than stone is. Um, this is kind of the part, this is my plan for where the path was going to go. I put it over here. This is about where it was. That's what I was aiming for. And I've kind of failed that a little bit. So the path's going to be a little bit further out than I was anticipating, which means that I might think about moving some stuff around in this block. Um... Yeah, if, if I need to move this stuff out, separate stuff out, then that's a little bit more space that maybe I need to use in the future. A little bit more buns in the system, you know. So, anyway, the next thing, uh, the next thing I want to build is the computer chips. But before I get there, I'm going to zoom the camera out and build the bus. Because I want all of that stuff set up and this is a good opportunity. You know, if I'm trying to move the camera from here up to here, then a good way to do that is to zoom out. Do the bit in the bus and then zoom in again but go up in the right hand corner that's a nice kind of transition in my mind a nice way of maneuvering from one place to the other particularly as i've kind of followed this convoluted route of following down here going back up here down here you know i, I, I was i've been thinking about how i want to get back again um, and that's how i'm going to do it i'm going to zoom the camera out do the bus computer chips um and then we can start talking about next things because then we can start talking about some 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 nice interesting things i can start Coming to, I can start making some useful stuff. Stuff that's going to make a difference. That's really what I'm aiming for at this moment in time. I want some, I want some armor. I want some exoskeletons. I want some robots. Man, I'd love some, I'd love some robots who could just go around and mend all of the damage that these meteorites have done to my base. Um, but uh, still, we're still moving a little bit too, still talking about stuff that's way too far forward. So let's do those two things. Zoom out, computer chips. A lot has happened since the last time I turned on this mic. Um, let's see if I can go through all of it uh, and not forget any of it. So the first thing that I did was I set up all of these train junctions. So when I do the path animations, it's really not worthwhile 
building in these junctions at the same time. It's, I've tried it. it. It's not worth the effort. It doesn't make that much of a transformative effort uh, effect. And it is a little, so much work. It's just not worthwhile. So I build these railways, just straight lines, no intersections, just straight lines. Um, and then I come back subsequently and make all of the junctions. And that's what I wanted to do. And I did in that kind of transition. That, not that transition, that uh, time-lapse footage. Uh, that was the first thing. Uh, second thing, I think, was to add all of this power. So I've got power um, around the base so that I can just plug things in as and when I need them. Um, third thing was to sort out the bus. And it's a big bus that I've allowed myself. Um, and I don't, I don't necessarily like big buses. I like things to be confined. So I'm treating it as if it was confined. So I'm building everything in the middle. And then I've got gaps just in case I need them. These two belts, these are going to be kind of... So in the middle, these are all my primary stuff. And then on the edges around the periphery, I'm going to have the excess products. So this one that I've built in is for sand. I think this is for sand, which is what comes out of the dirty water filtration process for copper and iron. It also comes out of uh, rare metals. I think I've dealt with that. Yep, I've got that little connection here. So... That's how I've kind of dealt with the bus. After that, I built in all of the train stations. Uh, well, not uh, five of the, the required train stations. I haven't done stone yet. Two reasons. Number one, there's this huge patch of rare metals that I want to use. And it's I don't really have any other big patches of rare metals anywhere else. So I want to use it. And two, I've got two massive patches of stone just down here. So kind of makes sense to just feed that in with conveyor belts for the time being. I'm going to have to play around with our perimeter wall because this is going to bring a whole lot of attention. So, yeah, might have to play around with that. Um, I also built the paths around these tra stations, and I didn't do it with any animations because this is all outside the, the picture of the time lapse. You know, there's a certain amount of this stuff that's grunt work, and, you know, moving the camera around just to cover all this grunt work would be just a logistical nightmare. So I just built it in. Um, and we still got these we still got these extra bits of factory to go on out here. So I still need more space. I have added space periodically as I've needed it. Left and right. I need more though. Um so that was the train stations and the paths. I also dealt with some my um steam power as well. Because it was a bit of a mess as I you know, when I set up the starter base I just kinda at, built some steam turbines and engines and whatever ad hoc. I wanted a bit more, uh, well, I wanted it to be a bit more regular and a bit more kind of not all over the place. And secondly, I wanted a bit more production out of it. I need more power. I think I might need even more power than this. I'm looking at um, patches of coal. This one is probably going to come in useful. Um, so what I want to do now, whilst the camera is here, I'm going to start producing some materials. I'm going to start um, inputting all of the ore that I need. Maybe even set up some train stations as inputs, depending on how I feel. So I want to get some materials into the factory. Whilst the camera's here, this is a good this is a good opportunity to cover that particular part. So that's what I'm going to do. Set up some mines, potentially some train stations, and get some material in. Yeah, get some stuff being made. Yeah.
Okay, so here's the thing. I, a few weeks ago, I watched one of my first ever time lapses that I ever made. I, I think it was the third one that I made. Um, and when I watched it, what I got from it was I was being really, really experimental and really, really adventurous with how I was moving the camera around the map. And what I remember was that, I mean, it was the third time lapse that I ever made. So the first one that I made was a vanilla one where I was just trying to get to grips with the mod. The second one that I made was an Angel and Bob one, and that was a real adventurous effort, and it, and it had flaws in it because I still didn't quite know what I was doing. But then when I got to the third one, I, I had a, a much firmer grip on how things were going, so I think I was just getting really, really adventurous. And I was moving the camera in ways that I have stopped doing, and I didn't really know why I'd stopped doing it. So, I, you know, I've, I've recently made this kind of pledge to myself to try and put more work in and try and put, you know, try and create better stuff with this YouTubing stuff. And so I looked at that time and thought, let's try and bring in some more adventurous transitions. Let's try and, you know, jazz things up a little bit. Let's try and get back to what I was doing a few years ago because, you know, I've it's developed a long way from there. I shouldn't be losing this stuff. I should be adding to it. I should be gaining. So that's what I'm really trying to do. And what, <laughs> what I've found is that it's, it's actually really difficult to maintain the standards that I want. And I keep making mistakes. And one of those transitions that I just put together just then was not what I wanted to create. It was, I got it wrong. So what, so what I was trying to do, I moved the camera across and what I wanted to do, when we zoom in and out with, the, with this mod, the, the algorithm for how it qu calculates those coordinates, it's a little bit funky when we do big movements. So I've started to separate those big movements into chunks so that it goes, so it's not a big movement anymore, it's two slightly, move, slightly smaller movements which are kind of joined together. And so when we're zoomed out and then we want to get, get very, very zoomed in and I want to split that into two movements, what I want to do is I want to do a big movement first and then a small movement second. And because of the change in area that we're seeing, those two movements will appear very, very similar. You know, we're, we're, if, we, if we calculate the area and we move in the same proportionate value of area, which is bigger for that first zoom, and we do the same for the second zoom proportionately, then they should appear at the same sort of rate. And that was kind of what I was going for. The problem was that when I did the calculations, instead of doing the big zoom first and the small zoom second, I did the small zoom first and the big zoom second, and it results in this kind of weird janky where it, it kind of moves and, it's, and then it goes wha-bam right at the end. Uh, and that was not what I was intending for it to happen. And the curious side effect is that I actually quite like it. I, I don't have a problem with the mistake. Like it's fine. I'm just. I. I, I mean. I'm, I can't change it. It's not. Like I can go back. You know, the, the moment when I realised that this mistake had been made is like ten minutes ago, in terms of the factory time, um, when I built all of the chips. You know, I'd only just compiled the footage, and that's when this mistake became apparent. So it's all too late. I'm not like going to go back in the factory time and redo it. So I'm. I'm lumbered with it. But I do. I quite like it. And this isn't the first time in this trans. In this time lapse for this particular. Uh, series of videos. Uh, I'm going to go back right back to when we were doing the starter factory to this transition and this was not quite what I wanted either but again when I did it I, qu I quite liked it. I mean it, it brings a certain kind of variety that I couldn't plan. You know I, I, I wouldn't have made the zooms and transitions in this way. It just has appeared that way I, I don't know. I don't know how. I, I'm just, now the thought process. Okay, so how do I intentionally recreate this randomness? Because it's actually quite nice from a perspective. You know, if you've got a whole load of standard zooms, we're moving from shot to shot, and then you've got something a little bit kind of left field in there. It actually brings in a nice little variety to it. Anyway, this is all. This is all by the by. Because what we what we've got in front of us is computer chips, and when I lay down computer chips. I have a few kind of standard. I have a standard approach, and it, it, I, I fight. I, I try and rebel against that approach, and I always seem to find myself zeroing back in. You know, if, if I'm put into a corner and I can't make a space work, then this is the approach that I go with, and it generally seems to work. So, when I started playing Factorio, my approach with computer chips was to approach it in the way that they're laid out in the game. So the first thing we need is green chips. So we would do green chips first. And then the next thing after green chips, we would need red chips. And then after red chips, we need blue chips. So if we imagine that we've got this bus over on this side of the screen and we start off with green chips and then red chips and then blue chips, then the green ones have to come out and they have to go left into the bus and they have to go right and up 
into the red ones. And the red ones do exactly the same thing. The red ones have to come out, they have to go left into the bus, and they have to go right into blue. And that operation might seem simple in, you know, in, in just theoretical terms, but if we're dealing with multiple belts in a, in a confined junction, then sometimes trying to get that to work elegantly is, is difficult. So my approach is, well, my standard approach, the place where I always end up in when I'm put in a corner, is to do it the opposite way around. So we deal with blue chips first, then we deal with red chips, and then we deal with green ones. So green ones can come out, be directed at the bus, and then just split off. Same with red. Red can come out and just be split off and go into the bus. And then blues, it, it's a much more elegant, it's a very, very simple way of seeing the, the computer chips issue. Um, and I, it was the same with this one. Like I thought, it, I, want, I had in my picture in my mind of what I wanted to do. It was a little bit kind of off center, a little bit kind of weird. But I just couldn't get it to fit in the space. I mean, you can see it's all, jam you know, if I had a single belt, one more belt that I needed to jam in in here, I would not be able to fit it in. Um, so I've kind of been forced into this place where it's the same standard approach that I use for all of it. But to be fair, you know, it's got this nice square edge. Um, you know, it's got this nice, nice square edge. I've got this nice big gap here, which I can put a proper process in. You know, this is a nice big space that a proper process will be able to squeeze into that. Or at least I should be able to anyway. But I don't know whether we need train. Uh, we were talking about stuff that's all way, way, ways in the future. So... Next steps from here, now that we've got some cute computer chips, we're also building all the furnaces and um, adding the iron and copper production, which we obviously have now. The next step is for me to build the main shopping mall. You know, now that we've got all of these ingredients, I want to start putting them into useful processes. Um, my first, first thought when, whenever I am in this situation is conveyor belts. Now, I want to lay down a process for conveyor belts. I want to lay down a process for inserters. I want to lay down processes for assembly machines and chemical plants and mining drills. And I want to get all of that stuff so that this stuff, this useful ingredients that I'm making is actually going somewhere productive. Um, and then maybe at some point I'll, I'll kind of squeeze in some science and work out where I'm going with that. But for this episode, that is it. I hope it's been good. Till next time.